Hi, if you're a new grad OT, or if you're a fourth year OT who's really keen to start your paediatric career when you graduate, you are gonna love today's session. Today, I had the opportunity to sit down with OT Bronte. Now, OT Bronte is talking to us today all about her experience as a new grad occupational therapist at Stepping Stones Therapy for Children. Make sure you stick around to the end because she also gives us the lowdown on what she loves about Newcastle and her favorite restaurant. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to Meet the Team. So we're going to be doing an amazing series where you can um, get up close and personal with some of the, some of our crew here at Stepping Stones. And our first cab off the rank is the very lovely O.T. Bronte. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Bronte. So O.T. Bronte has been with us since the beginning of 2022. And she started on our grad program, which is which is so awesome. And we love, we love Bront. So Bront, can you tell us a fun fact about yourself? Well, um, when I was eight years old, I won a competition where I got to go to the, um, I think it was the Australian premiere of Madagascar 2. Oh. And I interviewed Ben Stiller and Chris Rock on a red carpet with a bunch of other celebrities, which was pretty That's fun. That's an eight-year-old. Yeah. That's fantastic. Great. <laughs> I got through a tiara. Oh, incredible. You peaked very early. I did. I did. <laughs> and I didn't even realise how cool it was, which is quite yeah. disappointing yeah. me. Yeah. That's amazing. I hope you've got photos and videos. I do. And I do. I'm going to have to bring them in and share that. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So, Brod, tell me, what initially drew you to Stepping Stones? And what keeps you here? Well, originally, um, when I started looking for a job, I started quite early because I didn't really know how the process went or mm -hmm. how you apply or anything. So I thought I'll do a lot of interviews and hopefully I might have some options. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Um, and I started going to interviews and uh, they weren't great. Oh, so okay. they were for a lot of big companies, quite well-known yeah. businesses. And I found that I was going to these interviews, I was asking about the culture, I was asking about what the staff men other staff members were like, yeah. um, what it would my day-to-day -day would look like. Yeah. And the answer I was getting from these companies were, oh, actually, you're speaking to the Melbourne branch. Um, we can't mm. tell you right now. Or um, one company tried to kind of sell me on being unproductive so oh, oh you get to you get to work a lot from home and um we, no one really monitors what you're doing and it's right. really good you have a lot of freedom and I was like oh actually like I'm new I'm fresh I need monitoring I need support yeah. um guidance what's a super yeah, yeah and I was like also I want friends <laughs> Yeah, so I'll go. I saw your ad for a local business because I was obviously in Newcastle for uni at the time and I wanted to stay here. So I thought I'll try here, see how I go, and just loved being here from the interview. And when I walked out going, Oh gosh, I hope I get that. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I'm not kicked you here at Stepping Stones. Um, honestly, I just look forward to coming to work every day. It's so good. I love the clients I work with, the support, the team. Um doesn't take me long to get from work to my like from home to work. Yeah. Um easy commute. Yeah, easy commute. Yeah. Um just pretty much everything. I can't <laughs> Yay. it's great. It's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. Oh that's so good Bront. We love that. So what was your experience of the new grad program last year? Because it was like a 12-month program for you. Yeah, and I found it really beneficial. So I came in quite different to a lot of the other girls. I actually hadn't done an intensive sort of paediatric placement. Mm. So I came in really needing support around uh, assessment, intervention um, for a diverse kind of range of neurodevelopmental conditions yeah um, I needed a lot of kind of guidance around report writing because across yeah. all my placements as they were mostly in hospitals that's not something that I yeah. experienced so I came in needing a lot of guidance and that's what I got Amazing. I got a lot of um, support but also independence so I could find my feet and then go back to someone who I could really rely on and say look this is what I need help with how do I do it mm. and the training videos were also really great in I guess guiding all steps of that OT process from yeah. the initial assessment when you're eventually discharging your clients because they've achieved their goals, which is really great. Yeah, amazing. So, you know, my observations of you during that journey was, you know, you really did a deep dive into all the resources that we've got yeah. here and all the learning and training opportunities. You really just soaked it all up and you kind of, you know, it was such a pleasure to see you start as this, you know, 
fresh off the boat kind of therapist and you've grown into this extremely competent OT. (laughs) It's all true. It's all true. No, and I feel like the, you know, the quality of, of, care that you give to the children and the families that you see is is quite exceptional um and so i i just feel like you've really soaked up every opportunity that's been presented to you and yeah it's amazing yeah it was it was fun to do it though as well because whilst it was so much content and a lot to learn having i guess the other girls there learning with you was yeah. so great and just to look at each other and go oh, i don't know what that yeah. meant or like have you done this because I've got no idea. Yeah. So it was just so nice to have that support and those people, I guess, where you were and supporting yeah. you and knowing exactly what you're going through as well. So it's great. So it was really awesome that you you started with us because we actually had five new grads join us for our for our graduate program. And so they kind of they had weekly peer mentoring just with themselves. They had they had clinical supervision as well. But they kind of became this really strong, tight little gang, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Where you all just kind of had each other's backs yeah. and um you could go to each other for for support. And yeah. that was beautiful to see. Um so what does now that you've you've kind of moved through the grad program and you're now like fully fledged OT out there in the world doing beautiful things. What does an average day at Stepping Stones look like for you? Um, I'd say that most days I see between four and five clients. Um, I'd work a nine day fortnight. So I, my working days are a little bit longer to get that RDO. Yeah. Um, but nice to have that flexibility though, so right? So good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, so I work, yeah, a nine day fortnight, five clients a day. Um, there is a lot of flexibility around that though, because um, I travel to see some kids and others I'll see in the clinic. Yeah. And then working with kids, sometimes you get to work and all five are sick or, yeah, yeah or you've got a three, someone was originally at school and now they need to come to the clinic for some mm. reason or, so there is a little bit of flexibility around, I guess, those KPIs and how many people you are seeing a day. Yeah. Um, I do a few out days a week or I, and then I have in clinic days as well. Yeah. Um, and then between those clients, I kind of cluster them in a way. So I get a big report writing block or a big yeah, time slot for right. admin time as well. So that I get all those sort of requirements done. Yeah. So you feel like there's enough flexibility in your day to, to get all the work done. Oh, that you, you definitely, yeah. definitely. And I yeah. found um, even more so, which is quite strange. Um, and I think a lot of the people who have changed to a nine day fortnight have as well, how much you actually get through in a day like you think being here longer and maybe seeing maybe an extra person um to kind of yeah so that you get that time um would mean that I guess you feel more busy or you feel more rushed and it's the complete opposite you have so much time to get stuff done and I think the quality of like my notes and reporting and everything has improved for that which is wow all right so just so that our audience here can kind of get a bit of insight into Stepping Stones. Yeah. How have Stepping Stones helped your learning and development? So what have we done to support that? Yeah, so starting from the new grad program, the first week, I think it was, we had a um, series of videos and training resources that we could watch and move through, um, guided by either yourself or um, some senior OTs as well as the admin team to help you wrap your head around all the NDIS processes and that sort of thing. Um, We also had after that a zero to 100, which was kind of a checkpoint document that you move through at your own pace, supervised by your clinical supervisor. Um, And you ticked off all your different learning points so that you were ensuring that you were kind of covering everything you need to because this is quite a broad area. Mm. Um, We also have week. We had weekly supervision at the time, which was really helpful with our senior OTs who kind of talked us through, I guess, anything we needed help with. So we directed that, those conversations and saying, oh, I've noticed this, I've noticed that, Um, help me out here. Mm. And that was for an hour each week. Yeah. 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 So important as a grad, right? Yeah. And it didn't get to the point where you're like, oh my goodness, I need help because you Mm. knew you had that coming Mm. up and you knew um, like who was on a caseload and who you might need to talk about. Um, we also started on a reduced caseload. So 
as our competent competence and confidence increased, so did our the number of clients we were seeing a day. Mm. And I found that really helpful as well because yeah. it kind of got to the point where you were kind of jumping to increase your KPIs, like, oh, I want to do more of this, I want to do more Amazing. of that. You didn't feel overwhelmed at all. Yeah. So um, as well, um, we've got obviously our um, CPD budget, which mm. we can use mm. for courses which are either relevant to our case obviously relevant to our caseload or um our specific interests and things like that yep. which is really helpful yeah um and then starting this year as obviously not uh, in the new grab program we've gone back to fortnightly supervision but that's still a great thing to have each fortnight and um we had the zero to ten which was that same sort of process of getting yourself set up for the for the year for the year yeah. and organized and that's yeah cool. and you've been amazingly um instrumental in um sort of tightening up our the quality of the the cpd that we're doing here at stepping stone so bronte is so amazing she's we've introduced um a journal club so we have weekly um, meetings where we do professional development and Bronte was in charge of sort of structuring our journal clubs more effectively and um, yeah amazing that's such an amazing work it's really good um so Bronte what has been your experience with the team culture and the work-life balance you've kind of spoken a bit about that with the nine-day fortnight but yeah yeah so um even before the nine-day fortnight so as a new grad we started on just typical work hours to kind of get used to everything mm. that we needed to um but you still had I guess it was 8 45 to 5 so every morning I get up and walk my dog and then come to work um and then go home and what I found was really beneficial is that there's no encouragement to go home and smash yourself to catch up on anything that no. you might need yeah. to that you might have missed in the day or um if you didn't understand anything there's no expectation that you go home and research that endless endlessly it's kind of you work is for work hours and when you go home mm -hmm. that's your decompressed time yeah. which you absolutely need yeah. um and then I've just found I really liked just the staff fun days I guess would have been really good like when we went to Ninja Park um yeah. that was great so much fun. <laughs> yeah we've done so many fun team building things and I think even <laughs> without those like ex added extras it's just so much fun to be at work um it's a lot of banter a lot of um, we love the banter <laughs> We have Wordle Thursday, it's a Thursday today, and we have Wordle Thursday every every Thursday. Yeah. And there's almost an incentive to get the wooden spoon because yes. our office manager, Kate, decorates them so nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm in for the wooden spoon this term. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so there's a lot, yeah, just a lot of fun little things that we do. Um, I know we talk a lot about our core values here as a business, yeah. and we are very driven by those values. Um, we have every school term and values champion where yeah. um the person with the most shout outs for living the core values gets acknowledged for that and that is so nice because you're you're the one nominating that person and calling them out for everything that they do to be a good member of your team so it's really yeah yeah it's beautiful we've actually got a pizza party next week yes and our term one um values champion is going to be announced yes so that's exciting yes i think you're in the running oh, that's exciting. <laughs> So just to finish up, Bront, because I know that you're from like a rural area. Yeah. Um, what do you love most about living in Newcastle? I'm really loving um, having the beach as well as the bush. Mm. So I like to be outdoors. I like to run. I like to not be inside all the time. Yeah. Um, so having both bushwalks, beach tracks, um, reserves and things that you can go to, I really love that. Um, I love the food. There's oh, a lot of good so places to eat. Yes. Yeah. So many. Have you got a favourite? Oh, I like, there's this place in, I think it's Hamilton. It's called Verda Luna. It's an Italian mm -hmm. restaurant. It's beautiful. I haven't been there. It's really, really nice. To check it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Um, My, uh, my favourite brunch place is the Autumn Rooms. Oh, that's nice. On Derby Street. It's amazing. So good. Amazing. Um, and I also like the community feel of Newcastle. So that was one of my, I guess, big things that I loved coming from a rural town is there's so many community things on. Everyone knows everyone. Um Every, yeah every weekend there's something on you don't mm. lose that in Newcastle as yeah. much as it is a bigger city there is every time you go out you can't go to the grocery shops without running into yeah. someone like it's still 
small enough that you feel a part of a beautiful community and yeah you can go out on the weekend like oh I might do park run or I might yeah. go to a different uh, there was a kite festival which I watched from a distance on the beach oh, the other week which was quite nice yeah. yeah it feels like a big country town doesn't it it does it really yeah. does um yeah so it's a great place amazing well thank you so much Bron. thank you it was so great to get to know beautiful Bronte a bit better um yeah so well thank you for tuning in and uh, you'll meet more of our team members in the weeks to come thank you bye